I must say what the International Churchill Society is really about is making sure we never forget the heroes that gave us our freedoms. Well, I've been chairman for, I don't know, a dozen or so years, um, and really I got involved by accident, but having got involved, I realised that the memory of a man who was actually a man of ideals, had a big mouth, kept getting knocked down, kept getting back up. I'm lucky enough to be named after Jenny Jerome, who was Winston's beautiful mother, uh, an extraordinary lady, brilliantly talented. She spoke several languages. She was a concert pianist. Uh, she came over to live in Europe with her mother, and she met Lord Randolph and fell madly in love. And it was a wonderful whirlwind courtship. And her son, Winston, um, she really encouraged him and set him forward on his trip in life. Um, you know, she, and she opened so many doors for him. And as he later said, she left no wire uncut, no stern, stone unturned, and no cutlet uncooked. And what thrills me is the legacy of Sir Winston's mother, Jenny Jerome, born in Brooklyn. And there she is, the mother who gave back to the old world the son that would actually defend our liberties. The ladies who surrounded Winston throughout his life were really quite exceptional. And we watched them. They were true diplomats, um, from Jenny Jerome to Clementine through to Pamela and Mary Sarah. So we reinvented the society in the UK, Canada, and here. I'm chairman of it, have been. We built a National Church of Library and Center in DC on the campus of George Washington. We've, we've managed to make the Churchill archives and, and le lessons on Churchill, learning modules, free to everyone, every high school student in the world. And so, so I try and keep the memory green. And really, the starting of the building the new Anglo-American relationship really happened a century ago on the battlefields of Flanders. Those servicemen coming together to build a better world. The sensational scenes as Mr. Churchill makes his fighting speech to the United States Congress. Tumultuous applause punctuating every magnetic sentence of the Prime Minister's brilliant oration. It is the duty of those who are charged with the direction of the war to overcome at the early moment the military, geographical and political difficulties. And our challenge in the International Church Society is to remember those heroes that gave us our freedoms but for a younger generation, we need to inspire them that actually our great democratic institutions, the British Parliament, the parliaments across the globe, you know, it's remarkable that countries like India have become such great democratic forces in the world. And of course, we look to the uh, United States and your great institutions that have stood the test of time. I'm trying to make it relevant. I just won't let this be forgotten. Churchill loved going back over the great grounds of history. And uh, then, of course, the sad loss of the colonies, the Declaration of Independence. In Canada, the Great Dominion. United States, as my great-grandfather called the Great Republic. Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain. And it's from that time that Churchill really put forward the theme that reoccurs throughout his life of the destiny of the English-speaking people time. And I think the English-speaking world stands for progress in humanity, the representation of law, opportunity and equality, and the advancement of women. And this is something we're incredibly proud of. Clementine, our great-grandmother, um, we were lucky enough to know. Um, I think I was about 12 when she died, but as children, we knew her as this beautiful, exceptional lady. And, you know, she really had a wonderful marriage and partnership with Winston. And she was a strong lady, and her views very much counted. Um, and, you know, very important. You know, she guided him, and he obviously took advice from her as well. It was a happy thought of his constituents to present him with her portrait. Sir Winston once wrote that he married and lived happily ever after.
In terms of being inspired by Churchill, I think everyone should be. His, his courage and his determination to speak out against what he thought were, was wrong are values that are timeless and should be appreciated by all of us. Our chairman, Lawrence Geller's vision is to give us a range of scholarships to give youngsters, particularly those from less fortunate backgrounds, the opportunity to go out and learn in Churchill's name, whether it's um, uh, scholarships um, in history or foreign affairs. But for us, as the International Churchill Society, we need to make sure our message is grasped by a younger generation. I think more people are getting interested in Churchill, and that's a wonderful thing. Thank <laughs> you.